Welcome back. In the last videos that we did, we were able to write some sample scripts that goes to each page of the IMDb top grossing movies and extract all the movies for us. And we got the results here, all the 1,000 movies on that page. So what we would like to do now is to, for, to, for every movie there, we want to be able to click on the URL for the movie and extract some basic information from it. We want to extract some information, maybe the duration, maybe the hours, I think what we'll focus on today is extracting the cast and crew. So um, for this, we have the filmmakers, and then we have the role they played in that movie, and then we have the cast and the role they also played in that movie. In the previous video, we've created the movie item, but this time around, we want to extract like the cast and crew item so let's define the classes that will take care of that the classes that will be responsible for validating that data for us so this time around we want to create the creo item creo item base model we imported base model from pydantic don't forget so for the crew we want the crew id each member will have an id and each member we have a name and each member we also have like a role that is the role they played in that movie just like we saw just now then finally, we have a class. The class will be for the cast. So we'll call this cast item. Base model. Cast will have a cast ID. And every cast person will have a name. And every cast member will have a role that played in that movie. So for each movie, when we extract all of this information, we want to put it together in one place such that we have the information for one movie in a single place. It makes our job a lot easier and it keeps things in order for us. We can assess the data in a more structured format. So to do that, we'll just um, define another class. Class, let's define a new item. Class, we'll call it movie details. This is going to inherit from the base model. And this time around, each movie is going to have an ID and each um, movie will have a basic information. Now for the movie information, we're going to get that from the movie item. So we're putting everything together here. So this is going to be movie item. So all the items we're extracting, for example, the whole item here, this row, for example, we want to store it in movie information to keep our data ordered and structured. From here, we can go to the next movie crew. For that movie, we want to know the crew everyone that's me that is member of the crew for that particular movie so we use a crew item that we defined earlier and up next we want the cast such that for each movie we get the casts and now for each movie we can get the idea of the movie we can get other information like the rank the year everything about that movie we get the people who featured as part of the crew and then we'll get everyone who featured as part of the cast team. Then we want to clearly state that this is going to be a list because we can have multiple um, members as part of the cast team. So this is going to be a list and this is also going to be a list. Multiple crew members, we have multiple cast members. Let's save our changes. So with this done, what we have to do now is go back to the top grossing movies file and import these new items that we have defined. So we are going to import the crew item and the cast item, and finally the movie details item. So these are all the items that we have defined in our code. We we'll use this to structure what we need to extract next from the website so to extract that from the website let's get started so for us to extract that from the website we already have this function which passes the normal pages that we have but now we need new function that extracts information from each page so if this is parse we're going to define the next function parse movie page so let's define this we we'll call it parse movie page 
So we have this function that passes the movie page. Uh, this should be self. We want to get a response. Output for this function should be movie details. So for, for this, we know that we are going to be getting like a movie item, right? Okay, let me take you one step backward a bit. Let's go here before we continue. So for example, we've been able to pass this function right here and it has extracted information about the movie. We have our movie item. But for this particular movie, let's assume the first row now, we have the movie item. After getting the movie item, we need to get the cast and crew for that movie immediately. So here we come, we say cast and crew URL. Let's go back to this page. So on this page, for example, this is where we have the page, for example, for avatar, and we are in the cast and crew tab. And you see that the no normal URL just brings you to the page, but we are interested in cast and crew URL. And since we're not interested in any other information on that page, we can just focus on this alone. And you notice that the URL here has changed. So based on this, we know that the only value that is going to be dynamic is this value right here. So we can just copy this, go back to our code. And what we will do here is to paste this right here. And then we say this is out. And we can now, the title is fine. We can change the ID. This is the ID of the movie. Remember that we've already extracted the ID of the movie. So we can come here and say, we pass it as a parameter movie ID. So if we have the movie ID here, it means that this URL will keep changing. For the first movie, we get the URL. For the second movie, we get the ID here. And this value keeps changing and it goes to the cast and crew session. So we want that information. Yield. Yield. So after we say yield, we say response, follow. Now we're telling, when we say follow, we are saying that you should go, you should follow this link and go to the next page. Response, follow. Also follow. We tell it to follow the URL. And what is the URL? That's the cast and crew URL we just defined. Follow URL where the URL is equal to this. And up next, we pass a callback. Now, the callback now is going to be the function that we have. We are going to define. So it's pass movie page, which is going to be here. And we say meta, we pass the meta information to the response that it is going to be getting. So we say this is going to be movie. It's going to be a dictionary so we can extract it and then we say movie oh i made a little mis mistake here i see why this is not working properly we can't be using yield yield here multiple times if we are yielding this then it means we won't be able to access it here so what we'll do is just come back here and change this to movie so we store the result here when we extract the information from the move um, from the movie we save it in a variable called movie and by the time we want to go to the next page, we want to be able to pass this information that we've saved about the movie. Correct. So this is fine. Response, follow. And now we have information about the movie. This looks great. So we can test it out. But before we test it out, let's go back to our function here. So we have this function that we are defining that goes to the next page. And we want that function to extract information about the movie. And for starters, we want to get the information of the movie. Remember, we've already extracted information from the first page. So what we can do is to just say movie is equal to. Remember, we have the information from the other page. And now the metadata that we passed to that response in the other, um, the other instance, we can now get it from here. So the information we extracted from the first page is now available for, to us, even though now we are getting the response from the second page. And if you want to make this interesting, you can just put a type hint so that anyone using this will know that this is a movie item. So that's one. And up next, we want to extract the crew information. So let me terminal. So we have this right here, and now we can start trying out some things. Let's go back to this page. This is where we have the entire information. We can pass this. Don't forget, we have the, the, the selector gadget that will help us extract 
the information that we need. Shell, we want to get information from this URL. Okay, we have a little problem. Cast item, we have some error with the cast item. I think I see why we have an error here. So all I have to do is go back and check. Turns out I said cast ID is equal to ID, which is wrong. So cast ID is supposed to be str, a string. Let me be sure I've not made the same mistake anywhere else. This looks fine. So let's try running this one more time. We're able to get the information and the response from the website now. So now we've been able to scrape the information from this page. Now, let's try and get the information that we need one step at a time, right? Do first of all is to get all the information we need to get about them. So we can exclude this. So we have real and then yes, we want to get like, let me see. Let's check what this looks like. Table data. Let's see, does it have a table row? Okay, it also has a table row. That's interesting. So let's copy this. Let's go to VS Code and let's use that to try things out. So what we want to do here is to say um, response, response.css. We would want to get this. So we want to get, let me see, dot get. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, let's use extract. CSS selector has no attribute extract. That's well, it has an active course extract. So the headers is part of what we got. Okay, we also have the option for this class. Interesting. So we can actually get this class if we want to. I think we should try out that class and see what it looks like. So if I should go back here, let me see. Let me use a table data instead. I'm using the table data instead, and I want to use this the normal link. I want to paste it here. I'm doing this since it's a step ahead. I want to use this dot, and let's see what this result looks like. It looks a bit different from what we have initially. Let's format the result so that the result will look like text. And I think that will require us to use extract now. Let's extract. Oh, that works fine. So now we able to get the data using the 3D. Then we use the link element on their profiles to just get their names. We can just confirm that. So we see James Cameron, this Cameron, Siri Carter, we see Robert Stromberg. So this this seems like we've gotten it right and we don't have to stress anymore. We can just copy this. This will, this will just give us the list of all the crew. Let's go back to our function here. So we have a movie item, and now we want to get the crew, right? So we just say crew name, crew name is equal to, this time around we use this. No, not this, copy that, paste. So this will give us response.css. When we do this, it extracts the name of all the crew for us. That's simply straight and forward. Row equal to um, none for now. Row. Then we also need the trio ID. Trio ID. You can say this is equal to none for now. So what we need to do now is to check this out. So let's go back to that page. So we've been able to use that normal link to get the what's the code the row and now we well, to get your names now we need to get this so let's try clicking on this let me see i don't want this so this gives us to no we don't want this okay principal real td td let me see mm, let's check this out and see if it's going to give us the result that we want so we use response yeah, this is close, but this time around, we have something else to use inside here. Paste it, and we want to get the result as text. Turns out that this is very fast, and it has given us the result that we want to see. So now we have the director, writer, producer. These are all the roles. These are all the roles for all the crew members that we've been able to extract. So we can just copy this and paste it here. Then. Up next, we want to get the ID for each person. So getting the ID for each person is a bit uh, tricky. 
So let's see what it looks like. For example, when we come here, let me clear this. We know that ID for each person is in the URL of their name. As you hover over their name, you see the URL down there. So let's click on this person's URL, for example. Let me close this. So as we click on this person, we follow that URL, we see this is the ID of that person, ID of that particular person. So what we want to do is to go back to the, the previous page, stay there and try to get that information instead of coming here. So what we need to do is to get the link from this profile. So one way we can go about this is to look at this carefully. Make sure that we only get this info. We don't need all this other information. So our focus is on this URL alone. Let me remove this. We don't want this as well. So we have principal. I think we've used this before, so it's going to be close to it. But let's see what it looks like. So let's format this. Format this and um, let's extract it. Expected selector. Let me see. URL crew okay, is giving us some error, which is, oh, I use double H here. So let me use one and let's do it. Okay, this is quite long. Okay, we see href. This is all we're looking for. We want to get this, this one right here. We want to be able to just extract it and get this ID, the ID for each of the crew member. So considering that this has href, we've worked with href before. So we know that it's an attribute, so we can go back a bit and try this instead. Let's try, for example, let me see. Uh, instead of using a normal link, let's try, I doubt if this is going to work, but let's try a AWTR, and then this is going to be a href. Let's see what the result looks like. So we have one, two, down to 11. I believe we're supposed to get like 12, right? Let me see for other values that we've had in the past. Let me count this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, it's eleven, not twelve. I was counting twelve before. Eleven. Okay, that means this is correct. So now that we have these values as a list, we should be able to get just the ID from this. We should be able to extract it. So let's try this one more time. So this is, we know the output of this is a list. So for example, if we use zero, it's going to give us the very first one. So if it has given us the very first one, we can, for example, split it. Since we know that the result is a text, we want to split it using the forward slashes. So if we split this using the forward slash, let's see what it looks like. This is what the result looks like. And this is what we are interested in. We want to get just the, ID and we know that this is in position four. So we can just come here and say, give us the fourth item. And you see it outputs the ID of the movie for us. So this makes our job a lot easier. So we can come back here and we're going to copy part of this response. So we know that we want to return the result as a list, right? So we say this is returning the result as a list and we want to look through it the way we're able to do this here directly is because let me see, extract should be part of what we copy. Extract the whole result as a list in this particular response. And now we can look look over it and say uh, item dot split. We split the item, we get the fourth item or item in this result. Let me see. Item dot split yep. item dot split for item in response yep. with this line of code alone we've been able to replicate what we tried here so it's going to give us the entire list we're going to look over it we're going to extract the items and from there we split it and get the id for each person we save this and up next what we want to do is to get some basic information for crew items right so now we have the name, we have the role, and we have the ID. But they are all sitting idle. So what we need to do is just create an item or a list so that we put all these things together, we marry them and put everything together. So we just say crew items, real items. Real items is just going to be an empty, it's going to, it's going to be an empty list. So we can now go on and say for member, I think member in zip, the crew name. We have crew name, 
then we have the crew role and finally we have the crew id when we zip it now we're going to be having information for each member easily and it's really going to help us so what this means is that we have name role and we have id and this is going to be equal to member this this, this means we've been able to extract the information for one member at once by doing this and looping through it up next we want to structure this information in a way that it can be validated properly. Now we can use the crew item that we imported. Now in the crew item, we know that we have the crew ID, which is going to be equal to what ID. We also know that we have the crew, not that, we have name. So name is going to be equal to name. And finally, we have row. And row is going to be equal to so by doing this alone, we've been able to get the information we need and we've been able to use the pindactic items that we've defined such that the data is validated. And now we can just do one more step, which is what to use our crew items that we've defined, crew items of what? Append. Now append the items that we've defined to it. Let me bring this down a bit. So this is what the code looks like. It extracts all names. We extract all rows, we extract all IDs, we initialize an empty list, and then we come here and zip all these three items together. We extract the information for one member at once, and now we just pass it here to make sure that the data is validated, and we append it to the list that we have defined. So that's good, and let's move on. We are done with extracting all the pre information. What we need to do next is to extract the cast information. It's going to be the same thing we just did, but a bit different. So let's go through it. So we know that now we're going to have what's the code? That's a cast item. Let's start with the names the way we did before. So let's do cast name equal to but now we don't know so let's try it so to get our casts let's scroll down right here not to you yes cast we don't want the crew we want just the cast and we want to get this item by rows that looks okay we can copy this and try it out in the terminal. So we say response, CSS. And now we want to get this close and extract. I'm not sure this is let me see. zero text. And we want to extract all that information. Response. Oh, an R is missing. Response. Oh. This returns an empty list. So what are we doing wrong? Let me see. Oh, I think the previous step we use a, let me just say two, or let's see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. I think in the previous step, let me see what we use for the previous step. This right here, let's copy it. It should be the same with this. So let's scroll down a bit. And this time around, I'm going to use this right here yeah and it gives us what we want so we just go to where we have the links because each person's name has a link we get to where, just go to that position and instead of going with the link we just go with the text so this gives us all the names for our cast correct and up next we want to know their role cast role is equal to so we do the same thing Go back here and let me see. Now we focus on the part that had text just now. Let's focus on this part that doesn't have text. So we can't use T row. Let me see. Let me clear the whole of this. And to get this, let's copy, then go back here. But this time around, let's try and do this instead. This is what the content looks like. So we have 
Jake Sully, Dr. Grace, children. Let's confirm. Okay, Jake, that's correct. That works fine. So what we need to do is to return the result as text. And we have all of our rows. So now we have the rows. And finally, we need a cast ID. And leave it as none for now. I think we can use some idea from here. Let's try this out one more time. But this time around, we don't want to format it as text. We want to use the idea we used here. Yeah, where is it again? Let's give it a shot. Okay. Now we have this right here. And we have this JavaScript something. I don't show, I'm not sure we want to get the JavaScript stuff as well. So let's do, so if we do this, and for example, we select the first result and we do start because the first result is also going to give us the first row. And if we should do check the second row, we're going to see that it returns just JavaScript void. And that's not what we want. We want to make sure that all the results we are getting from there start with HTTP. So we can use a start with HTTP, start with. HTTP. This is going to return true or false, I believe. What I mean, this object has no attributes. Oh, that's a mistake. This should be zero. This should be zero. That starts sweet HTTP. True. So this is going to return true or false for us. So we can use this to filter the list where it tells us if something starts with true or it tells us if something starts with false. You understand that? You can copy this and take it one step further. So if it starts with, with that particular value, then we can use it to get what we want. So here's an idea. Let's do URL split. Let's copy this. Let's copy the whole of this idea we have here. Because if there's URL there, we know that we're going to get what we want. So item split for item in. And we are confident that this is going to give us all the URLs that we want right here. So we want to test for the condition. So how do we do that? We want to extract if the item exactly we extract this and now we want to apply condition if the item dot copy this part that we have right here start with starts if it starts with http we should be able to extract the url from it and i think we'll close our brackets and we see it right here this is a result now we've been able to get the id of each person so i can just copy this and paste it here and Close the bracket. So for each cast item in response, cast, we want to extract. If it starts with HTTP, that's what we want. But if it doesn't, we want we don't want that. So that's taking care of that for us. We can now replicate the same procedure we did earlier, which is to zip everything together. So we say for member and zip. This time around, we say cast item, cast name, cast role, and finally cast ID. So we have all the three zipped. Now we know that name, role, and ID is equal to member. We unpack this. After unpacking it, we can now say cast is equal to cast. We refer to the cast um, item that we imported. So this helps us to validate our data. So we can now say ID. It's not ID. Yeah, it's cast ID, I believe. Cast ID is equal to ID. We know that name is equal to name. And finally, row is equal to row. That's great. Then we can, oh, forgot to define our item here. So we now say cast items. Cast items. We know that this is a list. So we can come back here and say cast items dot append. We want to append this cast that we have defined here. So 
based on what we've done so far, we have the movie item. That's the movie item we appended to this. So we have it here now. That's great. We now have our cast. That's good. We also now have, um, so that's a cast, that's our crew. And now we have our cast. Then we need to put all these things together to represent just one movie. So let's do that. So to do that, all we need to do is to just define the, to yield the movie items. So how do we do that? We come here and say yield movie details. So now we can put everything together. So we know the ID of the movie is equal to what? Movie, remember we extracted movie earlier, movie dot what? ID, movie has an ID property, which is a string, right? And up next, we also know that we can extract the information about the movie. Now the information about the movie is just the movie, nothing else. So that's fine. Then up next, we want to get the crew for this particular movie. That's why we have our crew items. And we have our crew items right here. And up next, we want to get the cast for this movie. I think the cast for this movie is, um, okay, we have our cast items. This gives us our cast items and that's it. And before we test this out, we're going to do one more thing. We're just going to put a little settings at the top here that tells this how you should export the data. You know, initially, when we ran it last time, we were saying, okay, do this. We want you to export the data in a particular format. Now we'll just tell it to, we want to do a custom settings. So I already have the custom settings defined here. So we can just come here and say, just come to the top here and paste it right here. So this is what the custom settings is saying. So when we run this now, we no longer want to specify and say export to JSON or anything. We have it defined here to understand what you should do with it. So we for the feeds, we said export to this particular folder. That's data.topgrossingmovies.com. I want to make sure I have that folder here. I don't have that folder. So I can define it. It's a new folder, data. So all exports will go to data, unlike the way it will come here before. Then the format is JSON. Then this encoding is to format our data, store empty files, fields, none. And then we don't want to define fields. We want to identify so that it looks good. You're going to see the difference considering that we have this one before right here. This is what this one looks like. So by the time we run that and it outputs the data, you would see what that looks like as well. So my expectation is that everything is fine. So we can just go back here come to the terminal and let's exit this. We can quit this, I believe. Quit, yes. So we have left the terminal. Now we can try running the command that we would normally run to extract the data that we want to scrape. So this is what it will look like. So we see we have scrape I, Carl, Stop crossing movies. So let's run it. So we are experiencing some error. We have local value reference before assignment. We would want to make sure we find where that error is coming from. Let me see. Oh, this is where the error is coming from. And that's because it's supposed to be a text. I imputed it here and it's like a variable. So this should be a text and not that. So we can actually um, kill this terminal, we stop it. And now we can try running this one more time. I believe this should work fine. Itemary resident object is not subscriptable. Oh, another error. And if you remember, well, what we did here was to say meta, right? We gave, it, we gave this a meta property. 
So we need to reference the property that we gave it. So just come here and say dot meta. Yeah. And we say dot meta, that's a property. And now we can get the movie without the movie item that we passed to it. Let's give it one more go. One more. Three items reference before assignment. See that R, I see that arrow, and this is it. Three items reference. So we can just come here and say this is a list, pass an empty list to it. Your items, and we want to prevent that from happening here for cast items as well. So we can just pass this, and that's fine. This is running fine, no more errors. Our spider has finished running. So our, expect, our expectation is that it should have scraped all the data. We don't have any error. Everything runs run successfully. You see all the outputs here. So what we want to do is just go back to, to the file we specify so that we can confirm if the file is there. We said 1,000 items. This is just to tell you of the first page. Since it doesn't count the other pages, so we can just go here and we go to data. Don't forget. When we specified our settings, we should, we should come here. And now you can see what the output looks like. So the output looks more structured. So you have the ID of the movie. You have the rank. You have the title. You have the what time, what white lifetime grows, the domestic. Everything you need about the movie is here. It's well formatted. And afterwards, for this particular movie, we have the crew information. Do you see how good this is? We have the crew information. And for each crew, you get your ID and information about them. And this is why I like using pydantic objects, because it validates the data and makes sure that nothing is null. After getting all the information about the crew, we now see all the information about the cast. And then we go on to the next movie this continues down to the very last movie that we have with this we've been able to extract our data you can take this data import it into your bi tool or you can just save this somewhere on the db for example and it's clean neat and straightforward with this you've been able to build a very simple bot that goes to the internet uh, scrapes the data and stores it for you in the file so the code we, we use for this, you're going to find it online. I'm going to paste it on GitHub. I'm going to put a link in the description so that you can easily go there and see what the code looks like. So um, thanks for following to the end of this video. If you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to the page, like this video so that you can get to other people. If there are parts of the code that you don't understand, you can just um, put a comment and I'll try to explain them in subsequent videos or I can just reply to your comment. See you in the next video.